Nash rose to fame at the height of the British invasion. In the early 1960s, he founded The Hollies with childhood friend Alan Clark. The group churned out more than two dozen chart-topping tracks, but Nash's biggest success was yet to come. In 1968, Nash left the Hollies to form Crosby, Stills & Nash with David Crosby and Stephen Stills. Their self-titled debut album was an instant hit with two top 40 hit singles. I am yours, you are mine, you are what you are. The trio eventually expanded to a foursome with the addition of Neil Young. But this was no rock and roll fairy tale. In his new book, Wild Tales, A Rock and Roll Life, Nash chronicles the ups and downs of a life brimming with drugs and excess, love and sex, politics and activism. But despite all the distractions, Nash makes one thing clear. For him, it always comes down to the music. And Graham Nash is here. What a trip through memory lane reading this book, I have to tell you. I was singing the songs all day in my head. But I got it. My first question is, did you keep a diary for 50 years? How did you remember the detail? And I the wish I'd have had the discipline to, 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 to write my thoughts down daily, but I, I never did. Um, but I still have a brain. I mean, you know, I'm not a thousand years old yet, yet. But uh, I still have a brain. I can still remember what was going on. And I did, I did have a little prodding, especially from my friend uh, Joel Bernstein, who has been, uh, you know, probably the world's expert on Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and, and Dylan and, you know, us, you know. Uh, and he would say things, you know, it, that couldn't have been 1972 mm. because I have a photograph of you in that same shirt. And so he's got one of those minds. So I, I had my memory jogged uh, occasionally, but I, I remembered pretty much everything that's ever happened to me. I mean... The, the experiences of uh, hearing the Everly Brothers for the first time, uh, the, you're trying to buy the tickets for the Bill, Bill uh, Haley, Haley yes, in the Commons yes. and then getting slippered, a term that we've never heard in the United States, but you got beaten at school because somebody caught you trying to buy tickets to yes, that concert. Yes, I was standing in line and I'd taken uh, the, the morning off school because... Yeah, the morning off. Know, <laughs> yeah, rock and roll was very important to me as a, you know, in, in 1958 I was what, uh, 16? You know, it was important to me, and and a teacher uh, saw me in line getting tickets, and 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 busted me to the headmaster at school, who then, as you said, slipped me uh, heavily because I, you know, was audacious enough to follow my passion. Hmm. I guess I didn't know. I, I didn't know that you had a relationship, a long-term one, anyway, with Joni Mitchell. And of course, David Crosby had had one too. But you start the book by talking about um, meeting her and leaving the UK. After such success with the Hollies, what made you do that? What, what got your nerve up to say? And, and that was at the height of the British invasion. Do you like the sound of Crosby, Stills and Nash? I love it. So do I. And that's the secret. I'd heard me and David and Stephen sing. People thought I was crazy to leave the Hollies. All that fame and those girls and all that money and stuff. You must be crazy. They had not heard what I'd heard, which was me and David and Stephen singing together. And it was really Joni Mitchell who brought you all together, in a sense. We did meet at Joni's house for the first time, yes, uh, musically. Uh, I'd come from London to Los Angeles to meet with Joan to spend some, some time with her. And uh, David and Stephen were at dinner at her house. And after dinner, David said to Stephen, play, play Willie that song that we just did. And they were doing a song of Stephen's called um, You Don't Have to Cry. It's a bu beautiful song. They sang it. I complimented them on the song. It was great, and it was great two-part. I asked them to sing it again. I asked them to sing it a third time. I had my part down, and whatever sound Crosby, Stills & Nash has vocally was born in the first 30 or 40 seconds. We should say your nickname is Willie, to make that clear. You guys spent a lot of time together. I mean, you had that winter in Sag Harbor where you do nothing but create and spend time together. I mean, what was that like? Did you get? And there was a lot of dope. Yes. Going on a lot of cocaine, and you, you, you credit David Crosby with always having the best marijuana. What do you call it? Samilia? How do you say uh, oh, uh, Sensamia. Sensamia. Yes, I don't yes. know that term. Crosby always had great drugs, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll confess. And we were pretty high. A lot of people say, well, you know, if you'd have been straight, would the music have been better? And I, there's no way that I could possibly answer that question because it is what it is. We did what we did. 
And we're doing what we're doing to this day. Neil called uh, a week ago and invited David and Stephen and I to do the Bridge Benefit with him this year, which we're looking forward to tremendously. I love to support the Bridge School, which is an organization that Neil and his wife Peggy uh, for, for uh, children with special needs. And we, there's been 27 of them, annual events. We did the first one, and we've done about six since, and Neil asked us to do this one in the end of October, and that, I'm, I'm looking forward to it tremendously. You write very honestly about Neil Young, who, of course, is a huge talent, but he was a pain in the in more ways than one, both with David Crosby, had a tense relationship with him, but he was always coming and going, he was moody, he walked off stage once, and... What can you be, do? It's be. Neil Young. You have to take, <laughs> you have to take the whole package, and Neil is... He's incredibly serious about his music. I have to give him great credit for being so serious about his music. Music is incredibly important in my life, but it's only a part of my life. You know, I like to create every single day in, in various disciplines. I'm not just a musician. I'm proud to be a musician, and I'm proud to make music with David and Stephen and Neil. Uh, but it's not all that I do. You know, so I, I have an interesting balance in my life between uh, uh, between uh, creating and not creating, and I demand of myself that I create every single day. Family and photography is too, but I was fascinated by how your lives all intertwined. All of you m musicians, I mean, you toured with the Rolling Stones. You knew Paul McCartney. He called you once. Mama Cass mm -hmm. was very instrumental and influential. Indeed, influential. Cass was very much like Gertrude Stein. You remember Gertrude Stein from Paris in the 30s and 40s and the 20s um, would, would gather people together at a house of different disciplines to talk about what was going on in art and painting and sculpting and, and architecture and furniture building. You know, she would gather people together to talk. And out of those uh, meetings uh, came... Uh, other great creations, you know, because it's fun to hang out with, 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 with other, you know, creative, forceful people. And so Cass was very much like that with us. Mm. And she, she introduced you to a lot of people, too. She introduced me to Crosby, and my life's never been the same since. Yeah. And, and, and Joni Mitchell, of course. So, so talk a little bit about that. I mean, it's a heartbreaking breakup, but that, that collaboration was also extremely important with you, you and Joni Mitchell. Joni was a very important part of my life. She's a... Uh, incredibly talented, uh, I might even say a genius in, at music. Uh, she's a great painter also, uh, but with her music she's painting with words, you know. Uh, how could you be in the presence of such greatness and not have it rub off on you somehow? To what degree, I have no idea, but mm -hmm. when I saw David and Stephen and Neil and Joni writing songs, I took my ability that I learned with the Hollies about being able to produce a two-minute song with a melody that you want to hear immediately afterwards, but the, the Hollies songs were good, but they weren't very profound, they weren't very deep. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm surrounded by people uh, who talk about uh, Kennedy, you know, Robert Kennedy's assassination, mm -hmm. as David did with Long Time Gone. Uh, Stephen writing for what it's worth about the L.A. riots, you know. Later on, Neil writing Ohio about uh, how America was killing its own children. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm a quick study, and I, I learned a lot being around these people. Mm -hmm. Joni actually got a little annoyed at you for being anti-American at one point, saying, you know, this is a country that embraced you. You're not an American citizen. What are you doing getting upstage this in this place? For? It's true. She was, she was rather upset. And this happened in, in Europe, in Copenhagen. And uh, we, Crosby and I particularly would talk to our audiences about what we felt was going on with the U.S. government and, and thing, you know, the Vietnam War and what, 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 th what, what was going on, how we were being manipulated by the media. We would talk about that on stage. And Joni got upset one night. And that she got so upset that um, we'd had room service and uh, she took a bowl of cornflakes and milk and poured <laughs> them that. over my head. Yeah. Which, which was, I didn't quite know how to react, you know. <laughs> Here was a woman I loved dearly, and, and uh, I, I had to do something, you know. I, I, I couldn't let that go. So there was a maid in the room, and I asked the, the maid to, to, to leave, and I, 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 I took Joni over my knee and spanked her a couple of times. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, Graham Nash, I loved this book, and it's beautifully written. It's fantastic. Thank you, you, you so told me, much. I'll tell you what you told me, that your editor said you could have put him out of business because it didn't need any editing. It's fantastic. Wild Tales, I loved it.
Graham Nash. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Well, earlier today, Graham stopped by Boston Public Radio to chat with Jim and Marjorie. You can hear that conversation on our website at wgbhnews.org. And don't forget, Graham Nash performs live at the Wilbur Theater tomorrow night. Get your tickets while they last.